In this video, I'm going to share with you how to add ice traction to your running shoes, super cheap to prevent slipping, falls, and injuries when you're in icy locations. One of the big challenges is that when winter sets in, so many of us who like to go out to jog, to stay in shape, maybe go out with a walk for the dog, your, your special someone or whatever, you put on your shoes and all of a sudden it's slippery as heck and you eat it, maybe you fall and break your wrist, which happened to my relative or one of my relatives a couple of years ago, it was terrible. So you think, oh, I should put on the boots and yeah, that'll be better. And then you're, whoa, still sliding around. Well, in this video, I'm going to share a couple of different options for you. But at the end of the video, I'm going to give you the lowest profile, least expensive, and I found the most effective way to add traction to your shoes for running and walking around. Now, your first option might be to go on Amazon. By the way, I'll put links below to Amazon or to Amazon, to links below to all the things I talk about in this video, so you can go check them for yourself. So your first thing is you, you Google around and you might say, oh yeah, I've heard about these Yak Tracks. They are great. I used to have Yak Tracks and I love them. They're just these little rubber spindly jobs. Notice I don't have them anymore. Let me explain them. And they have these hard steel coil wires that go over the bottom of the shoes and they add incredible traction in icy conditions. Loved, loved, loved them. Right up to the point where I'm jogging along and I kick a piece of ice. I'm like, oh yeah, no big deal. Happens all the time. And then I'm jogging along and as I sweep my foot, I touch one to the other. My shoes snag as though I tied my shoelaces together. And I took a spill, bam! Uh, and I'm laying there like, what in the heck happened? I tried to get over or turn over, and it is like somebody literally tied my shoelaces together. And I look at my feet, and I had broken one of the coil wires around the rubber bands on the yak tracks. That little coil stuck out like a whisker and it snagged the other coils on my other feet, wrapped them around, and literally bound my shoes together. So there I am laying on the ice <laughs> at minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit or about you know, minus 20 degrees Celsius. That was miserable. I mean, that was horrible. I'm sitting there first like, okay, now I hurt. I'm hurt, hopefully it didn't break anything. But boy, that lesson of yak track's good. Yak tracks bad. It's still, they're great toys to use, but if you're going to do a lot of things or you're in motion, you need to really consider that if you break that, you could be in real trouble. So the next option that I go to are these slip-on little nice bottoms with some spikes on the bottom, and they're super great, but boy, they're freaking expensive. Anywhere from 25 US to 40 US dollars, depending on where you buy them. Plus, I've noticed if you look at the reviews, some of them with the little studs on the slip-ons, notice I don't own those anymore either. Those studs, as you're running or walking, you kick a little piece of ice and sometimes those studs bend back and then you look like, oh man, I just trashed these 30 or $40 special slip-ons to prevent me slipping from ice. Wait till the end of the video, I'm gonna give you the best option here, so hang on. And you think they're great right up to where you tear off one of those studs. Now the nice part is they're easy to take off, easy to put on, just like Yak Tracks, but man, that was so easy to trash those things. Super disappointing. All right, let's step it up. Dun, 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 dun. Now notice I still own these. Microspikes by Katula. Somebody always pronounced, uh, tells me I pronounce Katahula or Katula or whatever incorrectly. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll deal with it. These are super great. I mean, they give you a crazy amount of traction. It is literally like having snow chains on your feet, just like for your tires, but your feet. And man, these are the ultimate. You will have ultimate traction on here that the chance of you slipping on the ice is, I wouldn't say zero, but dang straight. Super, super nice. Lots of grip and traction. Oh boy, 
these are sweet. However, when you're running, not enjoyable. Also, I, as you can see here, these get pretty scuffed up, not a big deal, but I have crunched on a rock and busted one of the links. So I had to go buy another pair. Oh gosh, dang it, that really stank. I mean, I have these super nice micro spikes, super good. Hang on to the end of the video. I'm gonna tell you the best method. Just go through my process here that you've probably been through too. So I love these for walking, hiking, even light duty climbing, uh, super, super nice. Check out my video to Mount Bora. This is what I was using. I wasn't using crampons. Uh, you know, they're great, but for running, ah, they're kind of rough to run on. You will have the ultimate traction and they come off easily. They're pretty tough, but I have busted the links before. So that's something to consider. Now, just as a comparison, you might say, hey, I want to go with crampons. I'm going to go crazy and I want the ultimate traction. Well, chances are you're not going to be able to run in crampons for multiple reasons. One, crampons don't work on your running shoes. Don't click away, hang on, I'm getting to the point, but I need to show you the process you're going to go through because I went through the same process and you're gonna to wanna to put these crampons on your running shoes and you think, well, mountaineers use them, I should use them. You are not going to be able to run in these, you will go and of course you're gonna prove me wrong and go out and run in them and have a great time. But the bar here, if you step on a rock too fast and too hard, you can break the bar between the front and the back of the crampons and then trash them. Plus, have you ever considered stepping with a crampon through your other foot? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're gonna get injured. You don't wanna do that. So the evolution takes me to the simplest and cheapest thing that I promised you at the beginning of the video. Here it is. There you go. This is a $5 solution to all of your running and jogging and potentially hiking in winter problems is a box of these number six, three eighths inch screws. If there's a metric equivalent. You can use number eight, but I found the number six was less destructive. Check that little bad boy out. I mean, super super sweet and you think, what the, don't click away, hang on. Because, Check out the bottom of my shoes. This is the lowest profile. It's only like a couple millimeters tall and the lowest profile high traction option you can get that won't break. It won't cost a fortune, literally like $5 US. Go to your local big box hardware store, check it out or check out the link below. I'll put one to Amazon. But these bad boys totally work. Now, how do you put them in your shoes? <laughs> of course, I'm going to show you. What you do is you need a nut driver. Do not do this with a regular flathead. It's really miserable. You literally just put this in, you begin, and then you drive it down exactly till the screw sets flush, and that's it. That is literally all you need to do. Now you might think, oh, I only want to put a couple screws in here. Hang on, critical safety thing at the end of this. But you know, I don't want to go crazy. Trust me, you want to go crazy. That's it, and you don't want to go any farther because you'll start to strip out the rubber and destroy your shoes. Now, you can see on the bottom of my shoe here, Lots and lots of screws. I've learned about 20, 25 screws per shoe per lug totally does it. I can run on pure glare ice that is smoother than a hockey rink and I can run and I can slide, but it's a controlled slide. When I jog, I have enough grip without jamming myself to a stop and hurt and hurting my knees or my ankles or whatever. And this totally works. The downside, you cannot wear these inside. Do not get in your vehicle because you will shred your paint. And on tile, this, if you have tile in your home or linoleum, you'll trash your linoleum. 
But on tile, this is the slickest stuff and scariest ever. So major caveat, this is the ultimate solution to running ultralight for only a couple dollars or euros or whatever money you're using to go running in the ice and snow. And you can run on the slickest ice you have ever found. And you can run completely confidently with this method that I have given you. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links below to my books in the description. Antarctic Tears, Lost at Windy Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as check out my shows, World Beyond and Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy! Your ice running. Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your ice running.